Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome back to a maybe not slow fashion video. Uh, today I wanna share what I brought with me to Montreal. As you can see, I am in a different space, although I mean, really it's an arbitrary bedroom. So <laughs> take my word for it. Uh, I'm in Montreal. My husband and I decided to temporarily move here until mid-December. More on that in a second, but while I was packing and getting everything ready to move to Montreal and deciding what to bring, I realized like that it was a really big challenge deciding what to bring with me. And it also made me realize that I really don't need any more clothing or accessories. So I decided to embark on a no buy. Uh, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the no buy situation as well as what I brought with me to Montreal. And that also includes some new pieces that I've added to my closet over the past few months. So it's like, a perfect little oxymoron. New things, no buy. So if this is the kind of content that you like choosing creativity instead of consumption, hit subscribe below. I post every Sunday uh, and you can also find me on IG. I'll link that down here. I am slowly getting into TikTok. I mean, follow me there at your own risk. And you can also find me at my live studio workshops where we shop closets of guests in real time. So all sorts of good slow fashion content. I'll leave all of the details for all of it in the description box below as well. Let's jump on in. We chose Montreal because it has a really nice origin story for my family. I actually happened to choose an Airbnb that is just down the street from the very first home of my maternal grandparents when they decided to settle in Canada from Italy. I've always wanted to spend longer periods of time here versus just visiting family. We've actually rented two Airbnbs. This is our first and our second is a little bit closer to downtown, but there were a couple of things that I knew I wanted to keep in mind while packing. The first was my color palette. Luckily, I really only have one color scheme in my closet and that is denim blues like navy and baby blue, a pop of red, camel, cream, and black. What exactly were the activities that I was gonna be doing or that I plan on doing while I'm here in Montreal? I need to bring things that are sensible, that I don't mind wearing on public transpo, and that can take me from looking cool but still being really functional. Whenever I'm going somewhere new, I like to try and identify the vibe of the city and how that's going to affect my own personal aesthetic. I'm pretty familiar with Montreal as a city. It's very artistic and individualistic. This particular neighborhood where we are though, feels almost like Williamsburg. It's got this like vintage appreciation mixed with very highly sensible clothing. So what did I bring with me to wear to Montreal? Wouldn't I like to know also? I'm not gonna lie, I was really busy preparing for the live Shop Your Closet studio when I should have been packing. I have a feeling I still brought too much. I brought a lot of separates, probably too many. In fact, I might do a little recap after this and see what it is that I actually wore. Anyway, I brought five pairs of pants. First are a pair of faux leather and secondhand leather pants in two different colors and two very different silhouettes. Both of these feel sensible yet elevated and they work with the different shoes and footwear that I've brought. I'm gonna talk about shoes in just a minute. I also brought jeans, a lighter wash with a frayed hem and my dark indigo denim, which I'm pretty sure I just brought because I didn't have time to make a video about straight leg denim for you and I really wanted to film it. So if I can, I actually might try to just keep these aside and only use them for content purposes. We'll see. I can't go anywhere without my button up shirts. They're perfect for layering and I always just feel really good in them. And when I'm out of my comfort zone or out of my regular environment, I wanna make sure I have a couple of things that I know I can just instantly put on and feel really good in. I brought my white power of my people shirt. This is the tailor in a proper fit. I absolutely love this shirt because it can be worn so many different ways and it's the perfect weight for all seasons. By the way, my discount code for Power of My People will work site-wide now. I'll leave that in the description box below. And the other shirt I added is this beautiful men's baby blue Calvin Klein. I found it secondhand on Poshmark. I added this to my wardrobe back in the summer because I had let go of a silk baby blue blouse that looked really beautiful, but 
I preferred the cut of a button-up shirt. So this way I get the color that I really like in a silhouette and type of garment that I get a lot more use out of than a blouse. And speaking of blouses, I did bring one, my secondhand Cezanne polka dot blouse. I brought four medium weight sweaters, all in varying silhouettes and different neutrals. I only brought two heavyweight sweaters and I'm worried that I am going to regret this decision as we get closer to December, but I'll let you know. I brought my beautiful cashmere public habit turtleneck. I, look, I cannot tell you enough about this turtleneck. This is slowly, no, this is quickly becoming my absolute favorite sweater in my entire collection of sweaters. I wear it very often and it hasn't started pilling. I also like that the weave is nice and tight, so that also prevents pilling, but I always feel really elegant and put together when I wear it. I added it to my closet about, I think it's just a little less than a year ago. I also brought two underlayers that are long sleeve. This merino wool lightweight turtleneck and my Organic Basics crew neck long sleeve tee. These are probably the most important items for this season and that's because I like having a first layer that is really close to my body. We all tend to think that when we're getting dressed for colder weather that you need these giant oversized knits but really having that first layer that is in a natural fabric so your body can breathe and keep in the heat at the same time that's what keeps you warm, my friends. And I also brought my Organic Basics camisole because that works for wearing underneath the lighter layers. Because we're in this odd transition season, I also brought one t-shirt, my Organic Basics men's t-shirt. I love this piece, even though it feels perhaps a little bit too warm weather for the climate I'm going into. I think it's a great layering piece and it's just made of such a beautiful and soft fabric. It's a great emotional comfort for me as well. In terms of third layers, I brought my secondhand camel blazer, which is a really beautiful, longer boyfriend cut. So it's really streamlined and elegant. And then I brought my wool moto jacket to give me a more edgy vibe. It can double as a blazer or outerwear on warmer days. I'm bringing one dress and one skirt. The skirt I chose is the vintage wool skirt. I recently had it hemmed from being a midi skirt length to a mini. The dress is new to me, but I found it secondhand over the summer season. Over the summer, I realized that almost all of my clothes have a really fitted or form-fitting waist and silhouette. And like sometimes, you know, I just need to not have that. I need a nice flowy silhouette that feels like nothing is touching me. I'm sure some of you, if not all of you, can relate. This piece is very much out of my comfort zone, but I kept it feeling very much me by looking at a color scheme that I'm really comfortable with, so black and white, a pattern that doesn't easily date. This is so abstract, like you can't tell if it's animal print or geometric or what. And finally, even though it's a big billowy silhouette that I'm not used to, it is a shorter hemline. And I love to show off my legs, even on a day when I'm not feeling great, I always feel good when I'm showing off a little bit of leg. So that'll definitely work. Accessories are the spice of life. I brought most of my favorite jewelry, including my own paperclip chain necklace with Ana Luisa. This is still one of my most used and versatile jewelry pieces because it layers beautifully, but it also looks so good on its own. If you don't know about it, it is made out of 100% recycled sterling silver as the base, which is fabulous, uh, and it's gold dipped, and 10% of the proceeds do go to the World Federation for Mental Health. So yeah. Definitely something I always bring with me. And I brought some statement pieces like my snake ring from Majuri. I brought two belts, again, always making sure to have varying colors and very different sizes and buckle shapes as well. My brown one is from Brave Leather, which is also a recent addition. Brave is a wonderful Canadian company. I've had this one for a couple of months now and I absolutely love wearing it. I have a discount code for them, so I will leave that for you in the description box below. I love that I wear it alongside my 
$6.99 thrifted gap belt. For the bags, I brought two. The shoes that I brought are my Veja sneakers, which I can easily wear with heavier socks as it gets colder. I brought my Moto boots, which are about a year and a half, maybe two years old now. I had a rubber sole added to them so that they can weather wear a little bit better. I also brought my very, very old snakeskin ankle boots. They have just a little bit of a heel, so they're perfect for walking long distances, but still looking and feeling a little bit chic. I also love printed and textured boots like this for more urban scenarios because you can't really tell if they get dirty. It just looks a little bit more weather-worn and that just adds to the charm of the shoe. The final pair of shoes are my Dear Francis boots, which I purchased first hand. I think this is my last purchase that I made before going on my no buy decision and challenge from now until the end of the year. Let me tell you, buying a pair of very, very, very expensive boots first hand is not normally something that I do. I don't even usually consider buying anything designer firsthand because it's just too expensive. However, these boots have been on my list for about two years, so I had been looking for them secondhand. And during that waiting period, I saved up and saved up. I also have to account for very high duties and shipping when I'm looking at a lot of secondhand sites. When these tall boots didn't come up on the market for almost two years, it did give me some assurance that they are pretty awesome because it means no one's giving them up after a few years of wearing them. And thank goodness they are just as comfortable and just as amazing as I thought they would be. They work with my skirt, my dress, and a lot of my pants when I wanna dress them up a little bit. Were they absolutely necessary? Probably not. I mean, I had gone like five years without knee-high black boots. So that idea is what made me decide to do a low buy between now and the end of the year. I've never done a low buy challenge before because I prefer to approach everything in life with moderation. I think it's just an easier way to manage things and achieve our goals. But packing for this really spurred me to make a full stop and not add any new clothing or accessories to my closet. My no buy doesn't extend to those essential pieces like socks and underwear or anything outside of my closet. Oh, I said I would talk about leisure and athletic wear. I'll go over that really quickly. I only brought one pair of leggings, my beautiful encircled leggings. They're so thick and rich and comfortable. They also look good for going out. I also brought my sweater from my wonderful friend Yvonne over at Taste and Tipple. I'm really starting to realize that like traveling during these transition season is probably a bigger challenge than normal. Oh, and even though they're not closet items, I did bring with me these two books, which were actually written by you. I brought Seven Minutes to Freedom by Natalia Androsova. This is such a great like journaling book, especially if you're a content creator. And another little book that I brought with me, which gosh, is just so helpful for if I'm feeling a little bit nostalgic or melancholy. It's called Beach Glass by Linda Binley. And it's a series of short stories and uh, they're, each of them are just so touching and heartwarming. Okay, so there you have it. Pretty much everything I brought with me to Montreal. If I missed anything or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so, so much for watching. I apologize this one was a little bit long, but covered a lot today. Uh, yeah, hope it wasn't too boring for you. <laughs> thank you, thank you for watching. Uh, give this video a like or a thumbs up. I think those are the same thing. Uh, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and I will be back with another slow fashion video. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.